Hi, welcome back. Today we're going to look at the cost minimizing combination of uh, factors that a firm should use and the process that they go through to determining what that combination is. Um, so far we've kind of looked at each one of these factor markets separately and um, said for example that in the labor market we should hire workers up until the point at which the marginal revenue product is equal to the marginal factor cost or um, in the capital market where the marginal revenue product should be equal to the uh, rental rate. So we've looked at them independently but what we need to recognize is that rarely is there um, an either or choice. That is that there's very rarely a time in which you only need labor or only need capital. Oftentimes you need labor to run the capital that you're purchasing on the land that you have your factory located on. And so we need to figure out what the right combination um, should be. We should recognize then that factors can be a substitute for each other in the sense that ATMs um, are a substitute for hiring bank tellers, that the capital is a substitute for labor or um, American laborers are a substitute for uh, Japanese laborers in the area of computer programming, for example. Uh, and sometimes factors can be complements to each other. Um, you, you need a doctor in, or some sort of x-ray tech to work an x-ray machine. Um, and you need pilots in order to operate 747s. And so there's always this kind of combination of factors that goes into a production decision. And we want to try and think about uh, what is the appropriate way to approach that problem to decide how to minimize my costs while being able to produce the um, profit maximizing output. And what we're going to do is something similar to what we've already done in the past. We have looked at um, the optimum consumption of um, different products, if you think back, way back to when we talked about consumer choice, we said that in order to decide how many notebooks and CDs to purchase, we would have to look, for example, at the marginal utility per dollar spent to make sure that you're getting the greatest bang for your buck. So that uh, for every dollar you spend, you're maximizing the total utility or marginal utility that you receive. And so if we were looking at a problem like this, we would say that the marginal utility per dollar spent for notebooks, uh, when I buy a pack of two, the first pack of two gives me seven, uh, seven units, marginal units of utility per dollar. Then uh, the second pack of two would bring me six utils per dollar, and five, and then four, and then three. Whereas with CDs, because they uh, cost $10 a piece, the first CD brings me eight utils per dollar, the second would bring me uh, seven utils per dollar, six, five, and then four. And so then our decision would be for the, the first unit to produce I would or, or purchase, I would purchase a CD because it brings me eight units of happiness per dollar as opposed to seven for the notebook. Then my next decision, if I haven't run out of money yet, is to say, well, both notebooks and CDs both give me seven utils per dollar, so I'm indifferent between the two, and I'll purchase um, a pack of two notebooks and a second CD. And then I would keep going down until I found um, the, the point at which, the last point at which the marginal utility of notebooks per dollar spent is equal to the marginal utility of CDs per dollar spent um, and, and where I've run out of money so that if my budget was $50, then I would say that the profit maximizing um, place for me when it comes to maximizing my utility would be to purchase um, four notebooks and three CDs, because four notebooks would, bring, would cost me $20, three CDs would cost me uh, 10 or 30, and I would have spent my total $50 budget. There is no other combination that gives me as much utility, total utility, um, as the combination of four notebooks and three CDs. Well, that same idea is captured in this idea of trying to figure out how to find the cost minimizing combination of factors. The rule I'll follow then in the factor markets is very similar to the consumption bundle rule. I'll look for the marginal benefit per dollar spent. In this case, it's uh, if I was trying to choose between labor and capital, I would say the, the marginal product of labor um, divided by the wage rate would give me my marginal benefit uh, per dollar spent and I would look at the marginal product of my capital and divide it by the rental rate to see what the marginal benefit per dollar spent would be uh, for capital and I would go until I would find an input combination where both of those two numbers are equal and I will have um, produced as much as the maximum 
uh, profit maximizing output tells me I should be making. And we can take a real quick example. We could say if, I, if my profit maximizing output is 144 units, and if the price of labor is a dollar per unit and capital costs me two dollars per unit, uh, I can begin to kind of work through and decide what the optimum combination ought to be. So in this example, I'll look and I'll say, I need to hire labor or capital to start. So if I hire uh, labor, it's 20 is my marginal product of labor divided by $1. So my uh, marginal utility or marginal benefit per dollar spent here is 20. For capital, it's uh, 20 is the, the productivity, the marginal product of the first unit of capital, but it costs me $2. So basically I'm getting 10, um, 10 units per dollar spent. So my best choice is to hire a laborer. Then I look and say, okay, for the next choice, uh, if I hire a second worker, my benefit per dollar spent is 16, whereas with capital, since I haven't hired a unit of capital yet, I look and I see 20 divided by 10, I still have, or 20 divided by 2, I still only get 10 units per dollar spent, so it's best for me to hire another laborer. And in fact, it's better for me to hire a third laborer because their benefit per dollar spent is 12, which is still greater than uh, the first unit of capital. It's not until I get to the fourth worker. When I hire the fourth worker, that person's marginal uh, product per dollar spent is 10 and the marginal product per dollar spent for the first unit of capital is also 10, so I'm indifferent between the two. So I will choose to hire both the fourth laborer and a unit of capital. Then I stop and say, well, let's look. The fifth unit of labor gives me uh, eight. Marginal product per dollar spent is eight. It's nine for the second unit of capital, so I'll go ahead and purchase that second unit of capital because it's essentially uh, more efficient in providing me bang for my buck. The third unit of capital gives me 18 units of production per dollar spent. So does the fifth laborer. So I'll go ahead and hire the fifth worker and the second unit of capital. Or the and third unit of capital is, is eight. The fourth unit of capital brings me six per dollar spent. I'll hire that one. The fifth unit of capital gives me four units per dollar, which is exactly the same as the sixth laborer, which is four units uh, per dollar. And if you were to add up our marginal products for labor and our marginal products for capital, you would find that at that point where I've hired six workers and five uh, machines, I would have hit my optimum output of 144, and that would bring me the lowest cost combination that would get me to that, that output. So the process is exactly the same as you've done in the past for uh, choosing consumption bundles. We're going to do some more practice in class. We're going to look at both uh, uh, factor combinations as well as consumption bundles to remind ourselves and prepare ourselves as we get ready for the AP test. We'll have a couple of uh, short answer questions for practice, and uh, I'll be there to answer any questions you have. See you then.